about imaginary numbers. What is the imaginary unit? I. I. Okay, it is defined as what? Thank you. Square root of negative one. It's useful when working with the square root of negative numbers, right? Because if we have the square root of a negative number, we simply pull it, make it a multiple, a product of negative one and something, and then we can pull out I. Okay, a pure imaginary number is written in the form BI, right? Now, really this should say a complex number. I don't like the way they say this. A pure complex number is written in the terms A plus BI, guys. A plus BI, all right? Where A is the real part of the number and the BI is the imaginary part. If you remember, and this is just an aside and you don't have to write this down, if you remember the numbers, the set of all numbers, you have two sets of numbers. You have the real and you have the imaginary. You actually have an overarching bigger set of numbers called the complex, which is your biggest set of numbers. Notice that the complex numbers are made up of the imaginary and the reals. That's why we say this is the A and this is the BI part, okay? So every complex, every number is a complex number. It is a subset of the complex number. Whole numbers, natural numbers, everything is a subset of the complex, okay? Does everybody get that? So if you had to look at the biggest overarching set that we know that we work from, it is complex numbers. All right, from there we get real, we get imaginary. Within the reals we have what? Natural, whole, rational, rational integers, all of those, right? Irrational, and then we have the imaginaries. So these paired with these give me this, okay? A whole one of those. We can have any parts of those we want. If it's an imaginary number, it is still a complex number. If it's a real number, it's still complex. It's just not both pieces put together, okay? It's one or the other. One part is zero and the other part is not, okay? So understand that. So it says write each radical as a pure imaginary number. Easy enough, guys. What do we do? Rewrite it as square root of negative 1 times the square root of 144, right? We can peel off the square root of negative 1. That becomes I, and this becomes what? So the answer is 12I. Same thing goes for the square root of 80, negative 80. Square root of negative 1 times the square root of 80. Now to find the square root of 80, you've got to figure out what the perfect square is inside it. 16 and 5. So this is I, and this is 4 root 5, isn't it? So this becomes 4 I root 5. We don't put the I out at the end afterwards on these because we don't want to make the mistake of thinking that I is underneath the radical. All right? So we put it in between. Same thing goes with this. We can still rewrite this as square root of negative 1 times the square root of 36 over 121, which is, of course, I times the square root of 36 over the square root of 121. You realize you can take a fraction and divide it up into the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator, right? Remember your square root rules, which makes this answer what? Six, five, over eleven. Yes. We actually write it as 6 over 11 i. Think about why that is. We don't put the i in the numerator. We put it out to the side because remember we're writing it as b i, okay? Anybody have any questions about negative square roots? Do we all remember this? This is like an Algebra 1 thing, an Algebra 2 thing. Here we go. I to the first power is what? I to the second power is, of course, I times I, which is I squared, which is negative 1. We can figure out the rest of them by saying I cubed would be I times I squared, wouldn't it? Yes? That makes this 
I times negative one, which makes this negative I. Follow the pattern here. I to the fourth would be I squared times I squared, wouldn't it? So this would be negative one <coughs> times negative one, which is just one. I to the fifth, I squared times I squared times I. Well, that'd be I to the fourth, which is one times I, which makes it I, doesn't it? Well, what would I to the sixth be? I to the fourth times I squared. Well, I to the fourth is what? I squared is? So this becomes one times negative one, which is negative one. Anybody seeing a pattern here yet? Anybody want to guess what I to the seventh is? Yes, negative I and what I to the eighth is? What do you suppose I to the ninth is going to be? Okay, we can find any level of I because we know every four iterations, the pattern repeats, doesn't it? So all we have to do is take, here's a quick way to do it. I could tell you what I the 11th is without having to go through that pattern in my head because I know every four it starts over again, doesn't it? So I'm gonna take this right here, 11, and divide it by four. How many times does four go into 11? Two, with a remainder of what? Remainder of three would be what? So we have two, does everybody understand why, what this two means? This is two iterations of four, and every four of them is what? One, isn't it? So every I to the fourth that we have, every time we go through an I to the fourth, it's a one. So every one of those whole numbers up there that we've put through, every time we go through a grouping of four, it's just a one. So those all pretty much drop away, don't they? So really all we're worried about is the remainder here. And that tells us where in this we need to look at. So all we really need to know is R to the first, R to the, I to the first, second, third, and fourth. So I to the third is what? Negative. So the answer to this is negative I. So now we have negative three I to the 21st. So what are we gonna do? So it'll be negative three times something. We're gonna take 21 and divide it by what? How many iterations before the before it repeats? The first. Iterations of four, right? So four goes into 21 how many times? Five. With a remainder of one. Remainder of one means it's going to be what? Go up there. What is I to the first? That's what the remainder of one means. It really means I to the first. Because we have five I to the fourths and then an I to the first, get it? So I to the first is just I, so this becomes negative three times I, so the answer is negative three I, get it? Are you seeing the pattern? See if you get this one. How would we do this one right here? Six I to the 13th times 18 I to the third. What's the first thing we need to do? Sure, do the multiply them together, right? What's six times 18? Okay, so this is 108 I to the what? Yeah, remember this is just add, isn't it? So it becomes I to the what? 16th? Oh. So, what if we have so, so what happens? Four goes into 16 how many times? Four with the remainder of, which means we don't have a remainder. So we've gone through the pattern four times evenly, haven't we? So what does that tell me it's equal to? I to the 16th is what? One. It would be this, wouldn't it? Zero remainder means we wouldn't start the pattern over again. So we're ending the pattern, the pattern is one. So what's the final answer here gonna be? 108. 
2i to the ninth to the fifth power. How do I work that one? Oh, calculus students, future calculus students. Two I to the forty fifth? Really? Anybody want to challenge that? No. It's still two to the fifth. I to the forty fifth. Power to a power is multiplying, isn't it? This fifth power gets applied to both of these, everything in there, doesn't it? So what is two to the fifth? Okay, so this becomes 32, I to the... All right, so how many times does four go into 45? With what remainder? Okay, remainder is one, isn't it? So look up here, tell me what a remainder of one would end up being. I. So this becomes what? Thirty-two I, doesn't it? All right, y'all try one right here. Try number eight on your own. I'm glad we're doing this review. Anybody have an answer for me yet? What'd you get? That is correct. 27. Did you get it? This stays a negative because a negative one to the fifth power is still a negative. And then it's I to the 10th. Negative three to the third power is negative 27. And then I to the 30th, combine the I's and you get positive 27 I to the 40th, which is an even number of fours, isn't it, doesn't it? So it just becomes a one. Number nine, how do we deal with the square root? What do we have to change that to? Good. You change it to three I if you can. So this becomes three I to the third times what? Keep finishing it out. Finish it out. Let it give everybody a chance to. Yeah, that one I can't do. I can't do my head. Get it? 
every day. Again, it's not going to be this stuff that's going to be the problem. I mean, it's not the eye part that's the problem so much as it's the probably going to be all of the exponential stuff that you've forgotten how to do. Three out of the third, two out of the sixth, etc. All right, so let's get into complex numbers. Complex numbers of chord root as A plus BI, where A is the real number stuff and BI is the pure imaginary stuff, right? So if we add or subtract, we simply do like terms, real with real, imaginary with imaginary. If we multiply, then we distribute. We combine like terms. It's just distribution. And divide, you get to multiply by the conjugate. We've done all this once already this year. If you remember, we've talked about this at least once. So how do we simplify this? Real parts are what? And the imaginary parts are this. So six minus eight is what? And then, and yes, it does matter. It needs to be written in that order. Real part first, then imaginary part, okay? Even if the real part's negative. So try number 11. What'd you get? Yes, I know what you meant. Negative seven minus I. Okay, don't put one I. I know, I'm just saying don't put one I like you'd put one X. You don't put one X. All right, so now what? Number 12, any questions on 10 or 11? 12, 4I times negative 8 plus 5I just means you distribute. 4I times negative 8 is negative 32I. And then we have plus what? 20I squared, but you can't leave I squared. You have to simplify this down to a complex number. Complex numbers contain a real and an imaginary part that only contains an i. Why do you think we just did all of this stuff up here with all of the getting rid of the i squareds and i cubes and stuff? What is i squared? So this becomes negative 32i plus 20 times which means this is negative 20 minus 32i. And that is the correct form for that number. Okay? Is this coming back to you at all from last year? I hope. Starting to scratch that brain pan somewhat. Try number three. 13, I'm sorry. Try number 13 on your own. I have not had enough coffee today. Oh. trying.
pregnant. I have been out. I was out with my son in South Carolina, of course, and then I was out. I got back home and Sunday night, I got the stomach flu. I think the grandkids gave it to me. No good deed goes unpunished. And the grandkids. I love the grandkids. Well, you know, they're three and a half and one and a half and they go to daycare. They're little germ factories. Any of you who have little brothers or sisters probably know that. Yeah. You get sick. At first I thought it was food poisoning from the trip back, but then my husband got it too later after I did. And you don't usually run a fever with food poisoning. So, no, I hadn't even looked at anything yet. I'll start looking at them probably tomorrow once I feel like I'm human again. Because today, I'll have to admit, I don't even feel human today yet. My fever finally broke sometime last night, which is the only reason I'm here. Everybody get it? Any questions? Emily, you got a question? No. You just looked frustrated. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. Now what? Foil. Yes, just foil. 45. Minus 40i. Plus 27i. Minus 24i squared. And then you're going to plug in, aren't All right, you? what's going on here? 45 my... minus what? 13i plus 24. Anybody confused how this became this? What is i squared? Negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 24 becomes... Sometimes I'll do this and just mark this out and put a negative 1 up here so I know what happened. And then I can finish it up by saying 45 and 24 is 69 minus 13i. That would be my final answer. Okay. Here we go, guys. Try number 15 for me, really? please. Really? You're going to do this to me. Okay. Hang on. Oh, plus. Excuse me. No, thank you. It just dawned on me as I was looking at it. <laughs> Told you I'm not all there yet. Plus. Y'all were looking at me like, what? I knew when I looked out there and y'all were like. And I looked back at it and went, wait a minute. Yeah. Plus. Plus. What made this one different? Other than the fact that I got the wrong answer on it. Yeah. I mean, look, guys, it's the difference, isn't it? The difference of squares, basically, if you add, if you multiply it together, you're going to get minus 15i and plus 15i. Anytime you get conjugate pairs that are multiplied together, these are conjugate pairs, aren't they? 5 plus 3i, 5 minus 3i. So anytime you have conjugate pairs like that, you're going to get the square of the first and the square of the second added together. Okay? The i terms in the middle will cancel out, and this becomes plus 9 because you have minus 9i squared, which becomes plus 9. Now, will this do that? Why not? Because it's not conjugate pairs this time. It's the same number squared. This will be the square double square, won't it? So square this, and you get 9 double this you get what minus 66 i and then square this and what do you get plus 121 i squared so that's the square double squared and then you can finish it from there can't you so this becomes 9 minus 66 i minus what 121 
3 times 11 is 33. Double that, you get 66, don't you? Because then it'd be doubled. Does everybody understand where the double's coming from? This is the same as 3 minus 11i. 3 minus 11i. Double is this part right here, isn't it? Square, double, yeah, square. I just, I just yeah, it's okay. All right, so let's move on to 18. You could finish this up, of course. 9 minus 121 is what? Negative 112 minus 66i would be the answer. Okay? Now, what is the conjugate? Remember, we have to multiply by a conjugate, don't we? What is the conjugate of 7i? Guys, you could say negative 7i, but you really don't need to put the negative in if you're going to be multiplying it, just the imaginary part. We just need the i to go away, don't we? So what could you multiply by top and bottom to get the i to go away? In this particular case, you just have to multiply by i top and bottom, don't you? Now, it's easy to remember. So this becomes 6i in the top, and this becomes what? negative 7, which makes it negative 6i over 7. Now, we could multiply by 7i, but what's going to happen? If you multi or if you multiply by the conjugate, let's say you want to stick to the conjugate rule. 7i, this would be times negative 7i, negative 7i. So we have now have what? Negative 42i in the top and positive 49 in the bottom. Don't those both contain a 7? So you end up dividing out, which is why I say, why do you do that? Divide out a 7 and you still end up with negative 6i over 7. So if it is bare right here, in other words, doesn't have a real part. It's just the imaginary part. Just multiply top and bottom by i, okay? So what does this become in the numerator? Minus 4 over what? Negative 8. Okay, so you cannot leave an answer like this. This has got to be a complex number, which means the real part must be separated from the imaginary part. So when we do this, we have to split it according to its denominator, which means we need to take the real part, which is the negative 4, and put it over negative 8. And then we're going to put plus the imaginary part over negative 8, and we're going to simplify it. So what's negative 4 over negative 8 going to be? So this becomes 1 half minus, and both of these contain a what? Two. two. So minus 13i over 13 over 4 times i, right? Remember, we don't put the i in the, just to make sure everybody understands, we put the i out to the side. But do you see why you can't leave this as one whole piece? We need the real separated from the imaginary. Look at number 20. Now we're really into conjugate pairs. We can't just multiply top and bottom by i this time, can we? Why not? Doesn't cancel out the i in the, in the denominator, does it? If all I do is multiply by i here and here, don't do that, this cancels it out here, but then it ends up here, doesn't it? So we can't do that. So this is where we have to multiply by the conjugate. So what is the conjugate of 2 minus 6i? So we multiply numerator and denominator by 2 plus 6i. Complex conjugates, that's what these are called. Just like we have conjugate roots, we have complex conjugates. So now we multiply it out, all right? So what do we get in the numerator? 
2i minus 6. Correct. What do we get in the denominator? Yes. Remember, these are conjugates, right? Complex conjugates, which means the middle term, the i terms are going to cancel out, aren't they? So this is that case like we got right up here, isn't it? Which one was it? Right here. This is like 15. Okay? So this becomes really easy. 2 times 2 is 4. And then we do the last, which is minus 36i squared, which becomes plus 36. So we get what here? negative 6 plus 2i in the numerator. And what do we get in the denominator? And now what do we need to do? Split it. Negative 6 over 40 plus 2 over 40i, which can be reduced in both cases, can it? So it becomes negative 3 over 20 plus 1 over 20i. That would be the answer I would be looking for. Try number 21. Are they ringing bells? Is anybody keeping track of what time it is? 11.08. Oh, guys. Bob Jones is trying to hire me away. I'm not going. They're missing their they're a AP physics teacher has moved to a better job. And they're looking for someone. They she had 26 kids. It's tempting, believe me. Uh, she has 26 kids in her AP physics C class this year. I know. But I love my job. Check your answer. Did you get it? Good. Any questions so far? All right. Now, it says operations with negative radicals. This should be easy considering. Guys, here's the thing about negative radicals. You're going to want to do something incredibly dumb. Kind of, don't you love when I say that? Boost the confidence to you. You're going to bone this up. It's going to be bad. No, but it's, it makes sense if you think about it, though. You're going to want to say neg root negative 15 times root negative 5 is root 75. That's wrong. Why is that wrong? Because what is implied here and what is implied here? There's an I in each of them implied, isn't there? So you have to do this one of two ways. You need to pull the I out of each of them first, then combine, and then deal with whether or not, because you're going to see two different answers here if you don't. Let me tell you, let me show you why that is. If you were to combine these, this is the wrong way. And let me just put this out here, wrong way. 
you would say square root of 75, which would you would then say was what? Five root three? Okay, that's wrong. What you should say is this is i times the square root of 15 and i times the square root of five, right? So now this becomes i squared times the square root of 75. Well, square root of 75 is still five root three. We didn't get that part wrong, but what did we get wrong? We got the negative wrong. So this is negative five root three. That is the right way. Now, why is that? Because if you were to look at this the right way, guys, this is how you should look at this. This is now the square root of negative 15 times negative five. That means it is the square root of negative one squared times 15 times five, isn't it? The negative out of each one of them is now squared because each one of them has a negative. Therefore, two negatives is negative ones or negative one squared. And what happens to a square and a square root? They're opposite operations and they sort of eliminate each other, don't they? So the negative one would drop out. Do you see why I say you can't just combine those? This really is negative one times root 75, which gives us this. So however you need to think about it in your head, think about it that way. If you need to think about it this way, fine. I think it's easiest just to go ahead and pull the eyes out and deal with it that way. Yes, no? So does everybody understand why if you just get rid of the negatives, you're doing it the wrong way? So can you do number 23 for me, please? We leave for lunch. 17 after? 14 after? I think it's lunch time then. Thank you. Review. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. I need that reminds me. I need to check everybody's review after lunch. That was. I do, but you can still come in. Okay. It's a very small third block.
She teaches bio, right? Yeah. Love her. I said I'll have her. Oh, have fun. You don't like bio? Well, it's not that I don't like bio, but it's really hard to learn. She's an awesome person. Is she like one of those teachers that doesn't really teach but get fun in the class? You don't have fun in the class. So like, it's, a, it's my goal. Totally. So, so like, there's personality. Okay, she's like, sure, so there's, go ahead. No, 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 no. You don't learn if it doesn't teach and it's not fun. Hey, we got tennis yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Amelia's trying to get him. Amelia, who? Brown. You took it off. Oh, that's basically dating. No, it's not. I'm sad yeah. pausing for our connection to the parents You know what's great into it? He almost like, 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 like hit, hit somebody straight on. Oh. He's more than a I'm just going to be like, 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 I'm just all right, guys. Hey, guys, if you're hearing rumors about who's teaching what in the math department, let me just clear that up by saying none of us know what we're teaching next year. We've not been told. So what do you think you're hearing is strictly rumor only? <laughs> The only thing I know I'm teaching is AP Physics because nobody else here is qualified to teach it, so I know I'm teaching that. Maybe. I don't know. That's my whole point. I don't know. I know that I will have four preps next year. I don't know if it's going to be four AP preps or three APs and a non-AP. It could be four APs because I just heard recently that uh, AP was going to begin offering AP pre-cal. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that's free. Which is fine, but... Dual enrollment requires, to teach dual enrollment classes, that requires 18 hours of, to teach dual enrollment math or any dual enrollment subject, it requires 18 hours or more of graduate level mathematics classes. And I'm so close, to, I'm so much closer to retirement than not close to retirement that I'm not going back to school to teach dual enrollment well, for like, two or three years. Maya, it's like she already has it. Oh, I know. And it's the same, and it's the same material. I just know they're trying to find math teachers. It's like, I know like all my teachers are like taking credits or like classes. Oh yeah, there are a couple of them who are taking graduate level classes because one of the people who has enough graduate level classes is now a counselor and the other person is retiring and then there's, uh, I have a master's but I don't have, it's not in, it's in curriculum and instruction in mathematics, it's not in mathematics because I wouldn't be getting it in mathematics anyway, I'd go back and if I was going to get math graduate hours and anything would be in physics but anyway I picked the road I wanted to go down when it was time to pick a road and it was not dual enrollment <laughs> it just on some level it makes me mad and I'll explain why the highest course we teach in this in this school the highest course we will ever teach in this school is um, here we go. All right. Let's get back to it. I can cut and paste this all together. So, hello. Let's finish this up. We've got about 15 minutes left. We can finish this fairly quickly. We can be done with it. All right. So, looking at number 24. We've got to do the same thing with number 24 that we did in 22 and 23, etc. Okay? You've got to change all the ones with negative uh, negatives under the radical. You've got to pull the i out before you distribute in. Okay, in other words, you've got to turn it into a complex form, take it out of radical form, turn it into complex form, and then do your distribution or FOIL or whatever you're going to do. All right? So how would I write, rewrite number 24? 
before we do any multiplying. Oh, you said I root two. Okay, sorry, I heard five. Okay, so you are correct. So it becomes I root two times what? Five I root six. Yes, five I root six plus root 18. Might as well wait to simplify to the very end. Now we're going to go ahead and distribute, right? So distributing here, we get what? 5i squared times the square root of 12. And now we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to do i times the square root of 36. Now we can actually start doing all the simplifying we need to do. The i squared is going to become what? This will become negative 1. So now we have negative 5 times root 12 is going to be what? 2 root Yep, 2 root 3. And then we have i times root 36 is just 6. So now we're going to take and finish this up, and we'll get negative 10 root 3 plus 